that you should collect this book at that time no press nothing you read down and thus preach he ordered and then all the vaishnava in puri associate of sab chaitanya mahaprabhu they wrote down that book and they they make their necklace, necklace this book in that book first song is or this what she got it was so near and dear favorite to krishna that jagannath dev he heard and became attracted devdasi was singing in a forest in night and hearing it sweet this kirtan oh jagannath dev opened his door though it seems that he is a statue of wood but he came out and began to run very fast there were throny bushes so scratch his scratch came in body and also his claws were rotten uh, damaged and then he heard patient in the meantime when he was running oh that devadashi oh, he stopped her cut kit and he became mad and how he returned back to his temple closed the door and in the morning when pujari came for mangal aarti he saw that why jagannath so much in scratches and here and there and claws so then he called main priest and then king was called why it became who did they became very anxious they wanted to oh arrest the culprit <laughs> but who was culprit himself jagannath was culprit <laughs> why he ran away after a lady but he was attracted by song and then he gave dream to king his men servant that oh she was singing very far away and i could not check and at once i ran so bushes thrones oh they scratched in my body then he announced that in night when in front of jagannath there anyone can sing this sing song not far away here and there <laughs> so everyone were careful not to sing <coughs> one chaitanya mahaprabhu to he was going to chatak parvat <coughs> a very mountain like sands on the coast of ocean indian ocean and <coughs> in the night anyone was singing any lady oh in a very beautiful tune and sweet tune mahaprabhu could not check who is singing he he forget and he began to run towards that song gobind knew that oh this song is coming from a lady very young lady so he was pursuing him don't go don't go otherwise you will give up your life to embrace a lady when he was running mahaprabhu and he was pursuing but he could not run like chaitan mahaprabhu he was fast running and then oh he loudly told oh prabhu what are you doing 
Oh, this song is coming from a very beautiful young lady. You should not go and embrace. Hearing this, he became a lord. And he came in senses. He checked up him. Oh, Govinda, if you have not stopped me, then if I have touched that lady, even I would have given up my life forever, jumping in ocean. So this song is so. That book is now I have translated in Hindi in so many good ways. And it is ready in Hindi. All over India, also over India, here and there, this book is so famous. And I think that very soon English edition will also come. So, so many books will be available. I'm working very hard. And my associates, so many, Krishna has given, Swamiji have given so many oh, learned and qualified Rashik Bhakt to me. I'm very lucky. He has arranged everything and they are helping me. So, my Ujjwal in Mani, a very good book. Bhakti Rasami Sindhu, this book, Brihat Bhagavatami Tap Sanatan Goswami, Guru of Rup even. Very soon they will come. I am waiting very soon. And then we will know what is bhakti. Otherwise no. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed this book himself to all. Don't think that this book distributing is Arasat Siddhava. Don't think. Never, never. If it was so, that why Vyasadeva compiled this book, Srimad Bhagavatam, and he told Sukadeva Goswami to preach everywhere. Why Krishna promised in Gita? He has told that, oh, this knowledge should be given to all. If there is no Gita book, how we can preach? So don't, don't think like this. So you should have a strong belief that if the motive is other to earn money and by that maintaining me, then it is bogus, Arup Siddha Bhakti. But to please Gurudev, to please Krishna and for the benefit of all human beings if any book is distributed for Gurudev and Krishna and for benefit of whole universe, then this is not our of Siddha Bhakti, pure Bhakti. What to tell distribute, book distribution? Even a person is cleaning the stool of any devotee, it is much better than to chant and remember the Sarup Siddha Bhakti. If that man is criticizing others, then, you know, so many are Maya Badi, Sahajiya, they chant Harinam, this Sarup Siddha Bhakti, but what fruit? They want to mix in Krishna. Very, very, what, um, offensive, offensive this. So you should be clear in your mind that the book is distributed for the human being to please Guru Dev. If Gurudev is telling that you should wash the stool of any devotee, you should, when and join the mud, at once a very sincere devotee of Gurudev who was serving him so much, very good mridang player and songs, cooking, washing the clothes of Gurudev he was serving. But he became sick. And that time I personally told Gurudev, Gurudev was busy in serving that boy, even disciple, very young age. I told that I want to 
help him that you should preach i will look over this my god brother and i used to clean every day his blood coming from mouth his urine his stool stool even and that is why guru maharaj were very very pleased to me and that is why i am coming here <laughs> रिमेम्बर नगर संकीर्तन बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड गो थ्रू द बुक वट इज द एसेंस ऑफ दैट बुक एंड ट्राई टू फॉलो सिंसियर देन इट विल बी नॉट आरोप सिद्धा अदरवाइज इट मस्ट बी आरोप सिद्धा थैंक यू शुद्ध भगत भक्ता तवैवास्मी तवैवास्मी नजीवामी तया भी नीघराधे तंगयमा चरणी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल माई हम्बल ओबेशन से इन द लोटस फीट ऑफ माई परमाराध्य तम गुरुपाद पद्म ओम विष्णु पास इसमें भक्ति प्रज्ञान के सो गुस्तान महाराज एंड इन द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय शिक्षा गुरु ओम विष्णु पास इसमें भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज वी हियर वी हैव वी वांट टू ग्लोरीफाई भक्ति एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑन दिस सब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग That Rupa Goswami has told, "Adu Shadha and Tata Sadhu Sang." We have discussed two points only, and I think that we will continue it in also Bajar. Very interesting thing, and also you will be inspired, and if you will know all these things, and hear, oh. with very carefully then you will have a greed to serve krishna surely and then by bhajan kriya nishtha will come all kinds of offenses ignorances anartha one wanted things very easily it will go if you are sincere so i want that you should be sincere hear all these things so i want today to discuss about bhajan kriya that rup goshami has written in whole bhakti rasam sindhu and also in ujjwal in many for rare devotees to be a qualified to read and follow ujjwal in many of oh, very very rare but there is hope that chaitanya mahaprabhu associates are here everywhere in world though we know or not know they are so only hope that mahaprabhu is merciful krishna is merciful shrimati radhika is more 
merciful and combined mercy of Radha and Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sachin Nandan Gauri most merciful. Only this hope. So I want to discuss today what is bhajan kriya. So first of all, oh, Shamrani should he speak something about this. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Milikamjena Tasmai Sri Guru Namah. No, no, this. <laughs> First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my Parama Rajatama Diksha Guru Pada Padma. Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pada Stotara Sita Sri Sri Manchala Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Can you speak also? And the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my Parama Rajatama. Shiksha Guru Pada Padma Om Vishnu Pada Stotara Sita Sri Sri Manchala Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj. To all of our Guru Varga and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words on Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana Kriya is explained very beautifully in Sri Madhurya Kadambani by Srila Viswanath Chakrabadi Thakur, who himself is the re manifestation of Srila Rupa Goswami, who, as Srila Gurudev just explained, described all these things in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. In order to explain himself, he reappeared as Srila Viswanath Chakrabadi Thakur. And in Madhurya Kadamani, he describes Bhajana Kriya. Some of the activities of Bhajana Kriya are, are, you can speak more louder. are delineated in that song that we just sang, Shudabhakuta Charanarenu. That is, uh, serving the lotus feet of pure devotees, honoring Ekadasi. Gurudev once gave a speech on this in Brisbane, that Krishna is very worried, thinking these people in this world are so fallen, what can they do to serve me? So I myself will manifest as Ekadasi. As Radharani comes out of Krishna's left side, Ekadasi also comes from Krishna's body and is more important, Gurudev said, even than Janamastami. It's actually Krishna himself. Krishna has manifested as that titi. So observing a kadasi, participating in kirtan, offering bhog and honoring prasadam, engaging in deity worship, these are some activities of bhajana kriya. Srila Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that there are two kinds of bhajana kriya. One is Anisthiti bhajana kriya, anisthiti bhakti. And that gives rise to, if performed sincerely, to nisthita bhakti. First comes anisthita bhakti, that is there's six kinds of unsteady service. But even this bhajana kriya, which is unsteady, it gradually eradicates the different kinds of kleshas. It gives rise to klesha agni, or destruction of the different miseries, like a vidya, ignorance of the self, confusing myself with my body, confusing illusion with reality, confusing false ego with real ego, and uh, rag, great attachment to the material world, Dvesh, envy of others, Abhini Vesha, fear of death, being so attached to material enjoyment, thus always being afraid that death will come and destroy my enjoyment. So these kleshas are destroyed gradually by Bhajana Kriya. The six kinds of unsteady bhakti or Bhajana Kriya are first Utsaha Mai, that is, sometimes very enthusiastic, appearing enthusiastic. But this enthusiasm is based on not spiritual things. Like I'm first coming to school and the teacher says, oh, look at this book. 
A is for apple, B is for ball, C is for cat. Now here's a test. So I'm not knowing anything, just looking at pictures, but I can see by the picture, this is A apple, B ball, C cat. The teacher says, you're such a wonderful student. Then gradually the subjects get more hard, and I have more difficulty, and the teacher twists my ears. When the teacher says, you're such a wonderful student, I'm so enthusiastic. But upon being chastised, my false ego tells me to say, I don't like this school, I don't want to go. So utsaha mayi is false enthusiasm based on false ego. Then, gana tarala. Sometimes my um, concentration or absorption in the name, in scriptures, is very great. It's very condensed. Gana, like a cloud. And sometimes it's tarala, very diluted, because the subject matter may be hard, or my mind is very flickering. So sometimes condensed interest, and sometimes very diluted interest. And then, vyuta vikalpa, or fighting against sense gratification. I vow that I'm not going to take sweets, because it makes my mind uncontrolled. But then so many nice halava and other sweets come, and then I think, I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> so fighting and not succeeding in the fight against sense gratification, although trying. And then un unsteadiness of mind. That is, I will get married, I won't get married. I will get married, I won't get married. If I execute marriage life property, properly as a serious grihastha, I'll make advancement in Krishna consciousness by respecting my spouse as my spouse is a servant of Krishna, not for my enjoyment. So I'll assist them and we'll both advance in Krishna consciousness. And if I'm in the renounced order, practicing bhakti without any attachment, certainly I'll make advancement. But in this stage of indecisiveness, I can neither get the benefits of renounced life, nor can I get the benefits of serious grihastha life. I go in my mind constantly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is married, so I should also be married. But Sukadeva Goswami wasn't married, so I shouldn't be married either. But all the members of the Panchatattva were married, so I should be. But if I don't get married now, later on when I get old and I haven't gone through Varnashram properly, then I'll be attached to get married when I'm 60 or 70 years old. So maybe I should get married. In this way, being on the mental plane and not taking advantage of any ashram. And then, Taranga Rangani. Oh, inability to follow vows. Niyama Akshama. That is, one is fighting against sense gratification and one is and not being successful and one is inability to follow vows. That is, I'm chanting 16 rounds now, but Gurudev, my Gurudev told me to increase it to 32 and even 64. He told me that I'll really only make advancement when I can chant 64 rounds and Krishna will only accept my offering if I'm chanting sincerely 64 rounds. So I'm taking a vow, I shall chant 64 rounds. Then headache comes, cold comes, weakness comes, I'll start tomorrow. So attempting to follow vows, but inability. Niyama Akshama. And then finally, Tarangarangani. Riding on the waves of the material facilities that I've gotten by my impure execution of bhakti. That is bhakti uta, anarthas that come by the imperfect execution of bhakti. I give a good class. Somebody gives me a hundred dollar donation and tells me what a great class I gave. So I think, yes, I did give a good class. I should figure out how I should use this money for myself. But actually, if it was a good class, 
All the credit goes to my Gurudev. As we pray to the previous Acharyas when we sing their songs, this is not my prayer, this is your prayer. You, you feel this prayer and you've realized it. For me, it's ink on a page or simply words. Please make your prayer my prayer. Please make my heart one with your words. Similarly, the class that I may give is not my class. If anything is good about it, the knowledge is my Gurudev's knowledge. I have no knowledge. I'm simply repeating syllables. Gurudev explained there are three kinds of preachers. Those who simply repeat words, those who are in Raganuga Bhakti. Oh, please come on subject. To okay. So, Taranga Rangani. You are hearing I'm, from su subject. Okay. I I'm, want that you should tell about bhajan kriya, not the fruit of bhajan. What okay. you are telling, this is the fruit of nishtha or other things, mm -hmm. not bhajan kriya. Okay. So, please come on subject. Bhajan kriya means the activities of devotional service. There are nine processes of devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, thinking about Krishna, hearing about Krishna, remembering about Krishna, serving his lotus feet, engaging in deity worship, carrying out the orders. All these activities are activities of bhajan, activities of bhakti. Attending Mangalartik in the morning is an activity of bhajana kriya. Waking up in the morning and first thing I do is I remember my Guru Parampara, Jai Sri Sri Guru Garanga, remembering the qualities of each of the personalities in that Guru Parampara and praying that whatever qualities he has, he'll give those qualities to me so I can execute my bhakti properly. Then attending Mangal Artik and praying that I can enter deeply into the meaning of Mangal Artik as described by Param Gurudev, the deep meanings of the awakening of Radha and Krishna. Chanting. Gurudev said, if you simply chant Hare Krishna, you'll be full of material desires. Doesn't seem to make any sense. But the meaning is, I must sing the bhajans, the songs, because by singing the songs and praying to the personalities who wrote the songs that my heart can become one with theirs, my desires change from matter to spirit so that when I chant the Hare, Hare Krishna mantra, my desires are spiritual. And I start to think like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, take away my envy, um, let me desire to take birth in uh, Brishabhanupura. So many spiritual desires come when I regularly sing these songs and regularly hear in class. Gurudev is instructing everywhere he goes that whatever community is there locally, and I'm part of that community, I must attend the functions of that community. If it's not possible, then I must attend the functions on my own. I told him once, Gurudev, I have so much service for you, so my chanting and hearing becomes more sloppy because I'm so busy with my deadlines. So he said, no, you must be just like me. I'm so busy all day preaching and writing, but I always take time to chant and to weep. So you should also take that time. Thank you. Shriman Bhakti Shar Maharaj will speak on the point. Very good. Thank you. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak on this subject of uh, Bhajana Kriya. According to Srila According to Srila Vishwanatha Chakrabarti Thakur, 
the verses of Why Srimad Bhagavatam. Why not Rupa The original? I understand. He has commentary. He has also commentary. Vishwanath Chakrita, but really coming from Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami. So you can use word, oh, Rupa Goswami. I'm not prepared for that, Gurudev. Go on. What's that? <laughs> Don't fear. Go on. Srila Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur in his Madhurya Kadambini. He has described the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, second, uh, uh, second canto, second chapter, first canto. Srinvatasa Kata Krishna Punyashravana Kirtanam. That uh, there are three stages of Bhajana Kriya. First comes this Anishtita Bhajana Kriya described by Srimati Shamarani Didi. The unsteadiness and all those features we heard about characterizing that unsteadiness. Then will come Anarta Nivriti. This stage means the cleansing of unwanted... I want that you should begin from Anartha, there is and what is um, uh, Bhakti Kriya. Yes. Bhajan Kriya. He says that... Even Anartha is there. After that he says Nishita so, Bhajan Kriya comes. No, I want from beginning. If a, a man is full of so many Anarths, lakhs and lakhs and millions, how should he practice bhakti yoga? What is good for him to do? For him, what bhakti kriya? Bhajan kriya. He'd better find a guru and take shelter of him and get some instructions. <laughs> so I should say or you should say? Go on. Don't if he's that unqualified, Guru uh, anyone will need guru, but especially if someone is so unqualified, how well, they will know what to do? Or you should tell to others. I'm sorry, Gurudev, I'm not quite sure I, I understand where you want this to go because uh, Bhajana, she there? covered the topic of Anishtita Bhajana Kriya. Oh, Guru Padashraya, you want to do Oh, so you should see it. Okay. <laughs> oh, you. Shalakaya. Chakshurun Miditam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. So, what is Bhajana Kriya? Bhajana Kriya means activities of bhajan in the conditioned state. The conditioned living entity is covered by so many types of ignorance. There are so many types of anartas, and there are so many problems actually to do bhajan properly. It is not possible for someone in the conditioned state. Therefore, the very first thing one must do, Adau Guru Padashrayet. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> From the beginning, one must take shelter. Padashrayet. One must take shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Gurudev. And under the guidance of Sri Gurudev, only then one can begin the process of Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana Kriya begins at the time Diksha Kale, at the time one has received Diksha from a bona fide Guru. Nowadays some people are saying, no need of Guru, we can accept any uh, great Acharya, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj or Srila Prabhupada or um, we can accept any Vaishnava, no need that they are present before us. But no, according to Bhagavad Gita, Tadvidhi pranipate na pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnanenas tattva darshanaha. How can we serve Srila Rupa Goswami? How can we serve any Vaishnava who is not present before us? How can we fall at his feet? Oh, my Gurudev is here, I will fall at my feet. What does it mean pranipat? It means to offer dandavat pranam. Dandavat, ashtanga dandavat pranam. It means to what? Offer my head, my body, mind, words, intelligence, everything I'm giving at the lotus feet of my Gurudev. And then Gurudev will engage the disciple in bhajana kriya. Now you should do something. So some persons, they came once to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj at Surya Kun. And he gave them some instruction. Oh, you should grow eggplant. And they were thinking, oh, what is this? We came here, we wanted to do some bhajan. 
and remember Ashtakali Alila, but he is instead engaging us in growing eggplant. Why? Because Gurudev knows the heart of the disciple and Gurudev will take that disciple who may have so many anartas and who is in ignorance, unable to see the proper path and will engage that disciple properly so that they can come into the path of bhajan. So there is some discussion also. What is Swarup Siddha Bhakti and other activities how other activities which are not included even in the 64 items of bhakti, how they are also swarup siddha bhakti. Why? Because swarup siddha bhakti means according to what is the intrinsic nature of bhakti, which is anukulyana uh, krishnanu uh, shilanam bhakti ruttama. Uttama bhakti is defined intrinsically that swarup lakshan, the intrinsic characteristic of bhakti is that it is meant exclusively for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. So actually, we are praying to uh, taking shelter of Gurudev because why? Because he knows how to please Krishna, how to please Mahaprabhu, how to please Radha and Krishna. This is real bhajan. Real bhajan means like the six Goswamis are doing. Hey Radhe, Rajadevi ke chalalite, hey Nanda suno kutaha, Sri Govardhana kalpa pada patale, Kalindi vanye kutaha. Goshantavati Saravato Vrajapure Khedar Mahave Hulao Vande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yuga Sri Jiva Gopalakao. They were in so much distress. They were going everywhere in Braj saying, Where is Krishna? Where is the son of Nanda Maharaj? Where is Sri Radha? Where are the gopis? Where is Lalita, Vishaka? Huh? They are going everywhere, Govardhan, Radha Kund, everywhere. And they are weeping day and night. Someone is saying that um, someone may be chanting three lakhs like Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur. But who is higher? Oh, Srila Rupa Goswami, he may be chanting only one syllable, not even one name of Krishna. Ha! Huh? And he is falling unconscious. This is real bhajan. Oh, but we cannot touch this. We cannot even come close to this concept of bhajan. So, by taking shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Gurudev, he will engage us and he will give us some instruction that we should do these uh, activities. We should sing these bhajans. Why? So that we are praying uh, that the moods of our acharyas, they may come in our heart. That the moods of my Gurudev... Oh, who is my Gurudev? Oh, I am thinking of my Gurudev always. In what form? Oh. I am seeing my Gurudev coming before me like this, but actually he is serving Radha and Krishna, always giving pleasure to Radha and Krishna. <coughs> in this form, always I am praying that my Gurudev will somehow give me entrance into bhajan, because bhajan is the root of bhakti. Bhajan means bhajate, means how to worship properly. Hmm? Worship is not even appropriate English translation, but bhakti means devotional service doing everything for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. So, in this way, we can begin to come from the conditional stage and we are, can begin to follow the angas of bhakti, as Chamarani Didi was describing. Sravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam padatevanam arsanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atma nirvedanam itipum sarpita vishnau bhakti chenna vadhtana lakshana kriyeta bhagavati adha kanmanye dhitam uttamam so under the guidance of Sri Gurudev, we are engaging in these processes of bhakti and directly offering our life energy, our everything, at the lotus feet of Sri Radha and Krishna. And in this way, our human life can become successful. Hare Krishna. Very good. <coughs> what is the meaning of Guru Padashraya? What is the meaning? Omigyan Tavanandasya Ganandana Salakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venma. So, Bhajana Kriya means to take full shelter of the lotus more, feet of Guru. Bhajana Kriya means to take full shelter of the lotus feet of bona fide Sadguru. And under the guidance of bona fide Sadguru, engaged in the 64 limbs of devotion. So we should know very clearly what is Guru Pada Sraya. Hmm? So, what is, oh, very. So the Guru, there is two types of Bhagawan. One is Visay Bhagawan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Visay Bhagawan, he is the enjoyer. But there is another form of 
the Supreme Personality of God in this world. This is called Asray Bhagawan or the bona fide Mahabhagavat Guru Pada Padma Vaishnav. Asray Bhagawan indicates he is the form of Bhagawan upon which the jiva should take shelter. Chakudan Diloje Janme Janme Prabhu Se. The disciple should feel in his heart very deeply, I am an eternal servant of the spiritual master. I am his eternal servant. He is my eternal Lord. So we should examine ourselves very, very deeply. Have I reached the feet of Guru Pada Padma? Krishna says, Krishna says, one who calls himself my devotee, he is not my devotee.